This presentation sets out the latest stage of a proposal for a national catchment monitoring cooperative and has been developed by members of the catchment based approach support team and the catchment data user group. There's an accompanying Word document with the full proposal and a feedback survey. Please read the full proposal and respond via the survey to let us know your thoughts and how you'd like to be involved. Our vision for a catchment monitoring cooperative is one where citizen science and community monitoring data are integrated into a local collaborative evidence base in every catchment, with catchment partnerships empowered to plan, gather, interrogate, interpret and share this evidence to deliver environmental improvements. The initial objectives for the catchment monitoring cooperative will be to develop quality assured standardised methods for gathering and sharing citizen science data related to river catchments and their management. To build technical capacity in local communities and catchment partnerships to develop and deliver their own sustainable environmental monitoring programmes. And to expand and promote citizen science and community monitoring approaches as a complementary evidence base for statutory reporting. If properly resourced, catchment partnerships can deliver a robust and cost-effective monitoring programme. To achieve this, we need resource to build capacity and tackle some key barriers which are currently limiting progress. The CABA support team have undertaken a lot of consultation and have a good understanding of what these barriers are and how to solve them. There are lots of current opportunities we can build on. And Chesapeake Monitoring Cooperative, who were established five years ago in the USA, are helping us via a knowledge exchange partnership. First, we will set out the background to the development of this proposal. The catchment based approach is an evidence based adaptive management approach. Data and evidence help bring people together develop a shared understanding of the issues, plan interventions and monitor change. By using an evidence-based approach, we maximise the likelihood that we do the right thing in the right place, where it is cost effective, makes a real difference and gives the biggest bang for the buck. And that everyone agrees we have done the right thing to enable bottom-up management of our environment to drive changes in behaviour and align funding streams wherever possible. The CABA Data and Evidence Support Team work with partnerships to bring together a national evidence base for every catchment and drive collaborative local action. They also provide support in planning, gathering and using local evidence to augment the evidence base. There is also a wider network of associates who help deliver technical support via workshops, training courses and direct one-to-one -one support. The team works closely with CABA partnerships to make use of the best available data and evidence to develop a shared understanding of the issues in their catchment and to target their actions and funds where they will have multiple benefits for all stakeholders. This proposal is based on many years of providing technical support and consulting with CABA partnerships. Thanks to feedback from workshops, conferences and surveys like the CABA Monitoring and Evaluation Survey, we have a good understanding of how catchment partnerships are using their own data. We know that 95 of the 104 partnerships are using their own data and evidence locally and that two thirds of them are using monitoring and citizen science to engage stakeholders. The National CABA Support Programme has been developed over the last seven years and helps catchment partnerships to plan their monitoring, gather data, interpret the evidence and share with stakeholders. The programme has been informed by feedback gathered through numerous workshops and projects and is undertaken in partnership the outputs include a citizen science and volunteer monitoring resource pack, data gathering and sharing apps and maps, guidance, workshops and training courses, as well as direct support and mentoring. We have incorporated locally derived evidence into the CABA data package, which is a nationally consistent evidence base of over 150 GIS layers, clipped to each catchment, 
centrally licensed and provided free of charge to each catchment partnership. The comprehensive user guide and a supporting training programme helps catchment partnerships integrate their locally derived data into an evidence base to identify issues, causes and opportunities for collaborative action. We have delivered the second of our water quality training workshops in the northwest of England, covering strategic monitoring planning and objective setting, comparison of methods, practical monitoring exercises, data analysis and interpretation. The feedback from these workshops shows that they are well received and we know that there is an appetite for much more of this type of training and capacity building work in future. The CABA and Rivers Trust networks are a great way to share best practice, technical knowledge and expertise. We run conferences, workshops, training events, webinars and working group meetings. We also run the CABA website, newsletters and social media channels all of which are used to disseminate guidance, training and best practice and to seek feedback on future support needs. So far, we've been working with a number of partners to develop funding bids and lay some important groundwork. All of these resources and more are available on the Catchment Monitoring Cooperative hub site and are referenced in the full proposal document. The consultations we've done have shown us the key barriers which we need to overcome if citizen science and community monitoring is to have greater impact. Firstly, a lack of standards and consistency means that catchment partnerships and volunteers are overwhelmed by the choice of methods, data platforms and apps, which creates a barrier to entry. The lack of standards also means that data can't easily be collated or compared to gain a national overview or combined with other data sets to add further value. Secondly, the lack of technical capacity in local catchment partnerships. They need training and capacity building in how to plan and implement a monitoring programme and in analysing and interpreting the data. This was a key finding in the Environment Agency's Strategic Monitoring Review prototype catchments. Thirdly, there is a barrier around the lack of action taken to address issues identified. Participants in existing citizen science and community monitoring schemes have lost motivation when no action is taken to address pollution and environmental degradation issues raised, or when the data gathered is not used to target and deliver environmental improvements. And finally, Lack of funding is a barrier locally for planning, managing and delivering long-term monitoring programmes and nationally for coordinating the action and building centralised infrastructure for training and data handling. By building on the existing tools and resources to develop a standardised and consistent framework for citizen science and community monitoring, we envisage many potential benefits. Government wants citizen science and community monitoring to be part of the progress monitoring framework for the 25 year environment plan in order to engage communities in valuing, protecting and enhancing the natural environment. Many people consider citizen science and community monitoring data to be of lower quality and therefore not reliable or valuable for underpinning environmental decision making. However, if planned carefully to answer specific management questions, then citizen science and community monitoring data can be of equal or greater value than increasingly sparse statutory monitoring because it's more relevant to the question being asked. We are proposing a tiered quality framework for the catchment monitoring cooperative where all data is of a known quality and used to underpin appropriate decisions. Citizen science and community monitoring can be a very cost effective way to monitor large areas and other countries are incorporating this type of evidence into their statutory evidence base. For instance, a review by the State of Virginia's Department of Environmental Quality found that just under 1,300 citizen science volunteers contributed over $3.2 million worth of value in time and direct contributions in one year, 
and made up nearly a quarter of the statutory water quality assessment evidence base. In California, a study on the benefits of their citizen science programme showed a hundredfold return on investment. Citizen science and volunteer monitoring data has the potential to increase spatial and temporal resolution of evidence, helping to target management actions where they will have the greatest impact. Locally derived evidence is also critical for monitoring outcomes and adjusting delivery to ensure interventions are targeted in the right place, all of which increases the natural capital value of catchments. By engaging local communities in the gathering and interpretation of evidence, they are empowered to better understand the issues and to help provide solutions to problems, increasing the knowledge and social capital within catchments. There has been some resistance to developing standardised approaches in the past, with many partnerships preferring to develop their own bespoke local solutions. However, we've seen a shift recently and three consultations, including the 2019 Catchment Data and Evidence Forum and the 2020 CABA workshops, we now have a mandate from catchment partnerships for a more coordinated approach to citizen science and community monitoring. We aren't starting from scratch. There are some fantastic national initiatives that we can build on, such as the Riverfly Partnership and the Modular River Survey. also fresh water watch and river obstacles, all of which are national initiatives with training and data platforms which could be incorporated into a harmonised programme. There are also some fantastic examples of catchment partnerships generating detailed locally derived evidence, such as West Country Rivers Trust's Farm Advice Programme. All the farmer advisors carry a set of water quality monitoring kit around the catchment with them, using this to collect regular samples and scoring the catchments for a range of parameters to target farm advice work. They also use the kit to engage farmers and show the impact of management activities on water quality at the farm scale. They also run a Citizen Science Investigates programme with a range of methods available for volunteers to engage and learn about water quality on their local rivers. Other great examples include the Outfall Safari method for surveying sources of urban pollution, developed as a partnership between ZSL, Thames Water, the Environment Agency and the Rivers Trust. This is being adapted by a number of catchment partnerships around the country and is available as a standardised toolkit via the CABA website. There are many other local citizen science initiatives, including Mersey Rivers Trust's network of river guardians who undertake invertebrate and water quality sampling. South East Rivers Trust has a partnership with the Environment Agency with volunteers assessing pollution reports. And citizen crane volunteers monitor chemical and biological water quality in partnership with the Environment Agency and Thames Water. Catchment partnerships are also in a great place to test and develop innovative methods because many of them have links to academic and research partners and the learning can be rapidly shared around the CABA network. Current developments in technology, including low-cost sensors, remote sensing and eDNA methods and communications such as the Internet of Things, are expected to revolutionise what information we can gather and share about the environment. So, now on to the Catchment Monitoring Cooperative proposal. In developing this, we have already consulted widely and believe we have a good grasp of the issues and have mapped out a possible way forward. We are proposing a step change in the way that citizen science and community monitoring initiatives are developed and managed, which will have a number of benefits. Firstly, standardised methods and data platforms will enable national analysis and comparison and could enable citizen science and community monitoring data to be incorporated into statutory environmental reporting. 
A standardised approach will be more cost effective and prevent duplication of effort, as well as providing clarity to catchment partnerships to help them rapidly develop their monitoring programmes. Partners will be able to gain a better understanding of data quality and the decisions which the data can support, and so are more likely to act on the evidence. There is proof from the USA that offering standard methods and tools, combined with a robust support programme, vastly increases volunteer recruitment and retention. It will also be easier to attract funding for monitoring programmes which are based on robust quality assured methods. So to implement this, the proposed work plan would need to include scoping of the cooperative in terms of parameters to be included, then an audit of methods, platforms and techniques, prioritisation and gap analysis, co-design of protocols and methods, and development of a quality assurance plan and training program, and also adaptation of data platforms for storing the data. The benefits of developing an accredited training program would include building confidence among catchment partnerships to design a targeted monitoring plan, Ensuring monitoring is designed to fit clearly defined objectives and answer specific management questions. Raising awareness of a full range of methods and their suitability. Guaranteeing consistency and quality assurance. And increasing knowledge capital within catchment partnerships and local communities. The proposed work plan would need to be developed in partnership with organisations like the Chartered Institute for Water and Environment Management, the Freshwater Biological Association, the Riverfly Partnership, Earthwatch, the River Restoration Centre, the Environment Agency, universities and cover partnerships, among many others. Training courses would need to cover monitoring planning and design, the use of methods, equipment, as well as health and safety and quality assurance considerations, and data analysis and interpretation. The training would need to be refined as methods and protocols develop, and refresher training would be required to keep knowledge current. Tackling the issue of data interoperability so that data from existing platforms can be integrated would bring multiple benefits, including Combining ecological water quality and hydrometric data together for better insight. Integrating government and community data to provide cost effective ways to fill knowledge gaps. Making it easy to plug data into catchment mapping portals so that it could be overlain on a map. Building on what has already been done to engage existing stakeholders and provide cost effective solutions and spreading the risk by working with existing data platform providers rather than developing a single expensive and risky central solution. We are proposing to use ESRI ArcGIS technology to integrate existing data platforms and as a hub for recruiting and managing citizen science volunteers. Many catchment partnerships are already using ESRI technology to engage stakeholders through story maps, which bring together data and evidence with narrative content to help develop a shared understanding of complex catchment management issues. The proposed work plan would include engaging web developers to integrate existing data platforms, developing application program interfaces so that platforms can link together and using the hub to coordinate this and to publish open data feeds. This would also enable open link data which is being published by government and other large organisations to be more easily integrated into the local catchment evidence base. We also need to build capacity in catchment partnerships in order to develop a more robust local evidence base. We know that it is problematic for partnerships to fund long-term monitoring activity and skill development from project budgets. And this is reflected in the graph 
from the 2018 catchment planning review, which shows that catchment partnerships have made the slowest progress with the monitoring stage of the catchment planning process. Reports from the catchment partnerships, which prototyped the Environment Agency's new strategic monitoring approach, showed that there is an urgent need to build capacity in local catchment partnerships. So we want to build this capacity in catchment partnerships to make the most of the opportunities set out in the EA's strategic monitoring approach. We are proposing a fund to help build capacity at catchment scale. This would consist of a £10,000 grant for around half the catchment partnerships in the first year. In return, the partnerships would join the monitoring cooperative and undertake to engage with the EA to support development of local collaborative monitoring plans, help co-design and consult on methods and protocols for the monitoring cooperative, undertake training in monitoring planning, data analysis and monitoring techniques, and adopt and use common standards and data platforms as they are developed. We've consulted on this at the CAVA workshops in February 2020 and partnerships are supportive of this proposal and feel that 10,000 per catchment would provide good return on investment because partnerships could bring in funding and provide time in kind from local businesses, communities and stakeholders. As a comparison, the Catchment Partnership Fund achieves around 3 to 1 return on investment. In addition, the Natural Course Life Integrated Project shows how additional funding can gear up monitoring capacity by demonstrating a more rapid progress in the monitoring stage of the catchment planning process. We also propose to develop a charter establishing principles for the monitoring cooperative, which all members would be asked to sign up to. This will set out a statement of position for how citizen science and community monitoring data fit into the regulatory framework, a table of minimum evidence considerations showing how different types of data can be used for making appropriate decisions, and some fundamental scientific principles underpinning chemical water quality monitoring. The Catchment Data User Group has done a lot of the groundwork on this and we propose to further refine and develop the Charter through consultation. So work is already underway and we've made good progress on many elements of the proposal. Consultation with Catchment Partnerships has begun and we've also been liaising with key citizen science and volunteer monitoring initiatives and developing funding proposals with academic and NGO partners. We have delivered a second water quality monitoring training course with catchment partnerships to gauge the level of interest and to refine the training component of this proposal. We've also started discussions with partners about developing an accredited training programme. We have purchased and are testing ESRI ArcGIS Hub to allow partnerships to manage their own data whilst applying consistency and quality assurance. We have also held the second of a series of online knowledge exchange meetings with the Chesapeake Monitoring Cooperative in the USA to learn from their experience of setting up a similar initiative. So this is what we need to work on next and the speed of progress will be dependent on what funding we can secure. We need to establish a monitoring working group to oversee the programme and to share the workload. We'll need to run a consultation with stakeholders to develop the charter, finalise the scope and the strategy for the cooperative and to identify opportunities and agree the work plan. We will need to undertake an audit of existing methods and a prioritisation and gap analysis. We also need to extend the initial monitoring training, possibly including a residential training course for volunteer monitoring to build momentum and a team spirit within the initial members of the cooperative. And we need 
to start work on the data platform integration and to establish the catchment partnership monitoring fund to build capacity locally. So how can you get involved? Well, this is a cooperative by name and nature. We are working with the Environment Agency and others to build this into future government spending programmes. But in the shorter term, we need to find ways to drive this forward together using existing project funding or writing smaller funding bids. Here are some of the ways you could get involved. You could join the working group to drive forward the strategy, to write and coordinate funding bids, to manage consultations and develop the co-design process. Or you could join the technical advisory groups or ground truthing to co-design the methods and develop the data platform interoperability. You could also contribute to consultations to refine the proposal, to define the scope and order existing methods, and to identify opportunities and barriers. So if you're a stakeholder in catchment citizen science and community monitoring, then we'd like to hear from you. There are two main ways in which we'd like you to contribute at this stage. Firstly, please read the proposal and make your comments and track changes within the document and send that back to us if you like. But you can also provide more detailed feedback in the survey. We'd like everyone to register and complete this so that we can keep in touch with you and inform you of future developments. We will follow up with everyone who gets in touch. And we very much look forward to building this together and to working with you all to develop the Catchment Monitoring Cooperative. Thank you for your time and please get in touch if you have any more questions.